Hey, here's Steve Tech. I'm Steve. Gonna start doing a series here on valve train. And so it's gonna be a multi part series. This will be the first part of what we're getting at. And uh, the last part is probably gonna be uh, camshafts um, because the camshaft is uh, really hard to explain and a little more complicated. So, what I wanna do on this episode is we're gonna talk about valve springs and the proper way of selecting your valve springs and the proper way of setting up your valve springs and some misconceived notions of what the valve spring should be and how it should be set up. Okay, So uh, this is all our uh, cylinder head setup room, cam doctor over here, uh, and this is all our spring checking equipment. So I'm actually going to show you, uh, first off I'm going to show you the difference in between these two springs. Okay, Now this is your typical, let me bring this up there, this is your typical triple spring. You see three springs in there. So it has a uh, inner, uh, inner uh, middle and outer. And then this is a dip double spring. Now this is a really high end double spring. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what these actually look like comparatively to each other. Now these are just similar springs. I don't really care about the numbers. I'm not trying to say that this spring works for your combination, I'm just showing you two comparisons of a similar spring of and, and show you the numbers and what we're going to be talking about here all right so we'll start out with the uh, uh, with the oh, let's start out with this one we'll start out with the big triple spring all right and you can watch the screen here run it all at the same time oh, and get the test button all right All right, and then we go through and we'll run the double spring. And then I'll show you on the graph on what they look like. Oh, darn it, get the test as well. All right. Now, as you can see on the screen here, so this is your great big triple spring is the red. Now your blue spring, oh, there we go, your blue spring right here is the smaller double. So just for instance, like I said, do not take anything into the numbers, that's not what we're talking about. I'm just giving you a comparison between a triple spring and a dual spring in the same range, all right? <clears throat> so you can see they're very close here within, oh, let's see here. Uh, 1,020 and 1,420 and 1,060. So within 40 pounds of spring pressure. Now, that's not the most important part. What I want you to see is, is the graph here and how that thing lays out. All right, now keep in mind, this great big triple and this spring are very close, near, nearly identical. They are slightly different. The red, the red one has just a little bit more open pressure a little bit less pressure at closed down here or yeah closed okay so what you're finding out here is that we can generate the same pressure the same curve and this isn't the most technical explanation there's engineers that figure all this out and have all the exact terminology I'm not trying to give you exact terminology I'm trying to give you good practical information that's what we really focus on here is good practical information okay what it all boils down to is you got this big heavy duty triple spring but this little dual spring can do the exact same thing very close in numbers but what makes this a superior spring is if even with this spring being uh, slightly lighter up here at peak lift a little bit more on the seat that is irrelevant doesn't really matter but this spring is a superior spring to this spring and that's what I want to talk to you about and why that is okay so if you ever look around uh, in some of the tech stuff you're gonna find something they talk about frequency and the frequency rate of a spring and what the frequency rate means and again that might be just slightly off on terminologies here or there so 
don't need anybody coming around saying they're using the wrong terminology. Uh, we're just talking about practicalities here. The frequency rate of a spring is the weight of the spring and its ability to go back to its closed position and how fast it can do that in. Now, you take this big heavy triple spring, much larger diameter, all right? This spring physically is much heavier. It takes more energy to close to go back to its normal state, this state right here. It takes more energy for this spring to go back to this state than it does for this spring to go back to this state. That's the frequency number. What does that mean? That means that this spring has much more ability to not float and not lose control than this spring at the exact same spring pressures, at the exact same motor, exact same camshaft, everything. So these lighter, lighter frequency springs are always going to be better than what the old standard traditional triple spring is. Now this is a relatively inexpensive spring. Uh, these big high-end double springs are really expensive because they're really good. Okay, There really is nothing uh, wrong with the triple spring. I'm not saying that. They're a good, good standard system. I mean there's really not a big problem with them but uh, this is the superior spring because it has more ability to go back to its natural position, that uh, fully extended position. When it does that, it controls valve much better. It's not bouncing, it's not surging, it's not doing anything else. Okay, So that's why you'd like to use uh, the lightest spring. That's also why you use titanium retainers. That's also why you use uh, lash caps, keepers, all the things that you add on the other end of this uh, all matter on this end of the spring. So that's why things are like, we're going to talk about uh, keepers, retainers, uh, other stuff here in just a bit.